I'm a Shogun here, and I'm sure that some of you have already seen the gruesome videos coming out of Israel. And if you haven't, that's probably a good thing. Women and children are being snatched out of their homes, whole families taken from their homes, having their lives taken from them. In the middle of the street, these terrorist groups are live streaming themselves, recording themselves, riding around the city with bodies in the backs of their trucks. It, it's a really crazy situation, but for those of you all who don't know what's going on, basically, as most of us were sleeping last night, Hamas and several other terrorist, terrorist organizations claiming to be heavily funded by Iran, they carried out attacks in Israel. You know, there were rocket attacks. There was a small-scale ground invasion. I think there was roughly around 300 troops that actually invaded Israel. And they started going around just taking out civilians, snatching people out of their homes. And listen, I'm not here to talk about the political aspect of this situation. I'm not here to dive into the technicalities. I understand that this is a complicated situation, but right now is not the time to talk about technicalities. And to be honest with you, right now is not the time to be like, yeah, well, I know. Well, what about Palestine? And what about what Israel did here, what Israel did there? I mean, there's a conversation to be had at another time. But right now, as we have a terrorist group, if you want to call them that, snatching women and kids out of their homes and beating them and, you know, taking their lives in the middle of the street, right now is not the time to have a conversation about the technicalities, uh, about this overall situation. But I know that a lot of you all hear, oh, turmoil in the Middle East, you know, random... Um, terror attacks in the Middle East and you think nothing of it because this is what we're used to. There has not really been a time in my life where there was peace in the Middle East. There's always something going on over there. I will say that there was a small little period a few years ago where tensions seemed to be at an all-time low and things were kind of quiet. But then about three and a half or so years ago, Something happened. I can't quite put my finger on it, but something happened in this country. And all of a sudden, the price of everything started rising. The price of gas went up. The price of food went up. And then all of a sudden, wars started breaking out all across the world. I wonder what happened in our country about three and a half years ago that really started this chain reaction. You know, I just I just can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe some of you all can help me figure out what was the big change in America that brought in all of this craziness. But anyways, I'm watching this situation unfold and I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is interesting. Because we have another war raging in Ukraine and America is funding that war. And to make no mistake about it, we're about to be funding another war now. That's the first thing that came to my mind when I saw the situation. I was like, okay, well, it looks like we're going to be funding Ukraine and Israel. But also looking at how this situation is playing out, I got to thinking, damn, Ukraine has convinced us or they've convinced our politicians, if you will, that they need billions upon billions of dollars to defend themselves from Russia. Every time you turn around, Ukraine has their hand out. They need more money. Ukraine needs hundreds of billions of dollars to fight Russia. Meanwhile, Hamas invaded Israel with nothing but a freaking box fan attached to a beach kite. Now, I understand that Russia's military and the military conflicts that are happening over here in, in the Middle East, I understand it's a whole different animal. I understand I understand it's a whole different situation. It's a whole different ball game, right? 
But my point is, if there's a will, there's a way. You don't sit around waiting for handouts from other countries to defend your country. Is Hamas sitting around waiting for $900 billion to attack Israel? No. They went to the local Kmart or the local Islami Mart. They said, give me your best fan and give me something that floats in the air. And they made it work. They didn't need hundreds of billions of dollars. They got a fan and a beach kite and turned it into a paraglider. And they're paragliding into Israel, invading a country that we were led to believe had one of the best air defense systems in the world. No money needed. They didn't need hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars. They went to the local freaking hardware store and they put some ish together because if there's a will, there's a way. Random people with no experience and no training stitched together fans with beach kites and they successfully launched an attack against one of our allies. And it's been interesting watching. It's a really sad, it's a devastating situation. But when I'm literally watching people invade a country that's supposed to have the, the best air defense system almost in the world, and I'm watching as people on paragliders and hang gliders roll into their country, just blasting away with weapons while they're gliding in the sky on makeshift nonsense that probably cost them all of 15 bucks to slap together. Meanwhile, Ukraine needs a hundred billion dollars to get their ass kicked repeatedly. It's insane, people. It's insane. But when looking at this overall situation that's happening in Israel right now, this is not one of those little skirmishes, nothing to see here type of situations. This is the worst it has been in years. And it's going to get worse. As we speak, I'm sure Israel is retaliating. There's going to be a lot of innocent people killed. Buildings are getting wiped out live on the news. It's going to be a very crazy situation. And it looks as if Israel is going to have to defend itself from multiple fronts. We have multiple countries, multiple organizations and militias from various countries all ready to make a strike. They all hate Israel, right? But but isn't this funny? How we have this little emergency test that we had the other day. And literally the same day, Russia has a nuclear drill. And then literally the next day, Putin releases a statement talking about basically wiping out the whole world with nukes if he has to. And now, like two days after this drill, we have a new war breaking out in the Middle East, possibly the worst one that we've seen, at least in my lifetime. I do think there's a, a, there's a possibility that this cools over a little bit, but from the looks of things, I think this is about to take off to one of our, one of the next big, you know, situations that's going on in the world, if you will. And when you look at history and you look at World War I, World War II, a lot of people think that, you know, one random event happens and then half the world's like, yeah, we're going to go to war, war with the other half of the world. That's not how it works. World wars, you know, they're, they're, they're not all fought. How can I explain this? There's different things that go on. Little wars and skirmishes and problems break out around the world. You know what I mean? It's not like one deciding thing happens and then world war breaks out. That's not how it works. You know, you'll have a couple of countries at odds with each other, then another couple of countries over here. And next thing you know, there's wars going on across the world, the world and certain factions, you know, join up with other factions and certain countries have better interest with this. And, and, and it's really complicated. But what I believe we're witnessing is the start of that. You have what's going on over here with Russia and Ukraine. That's one front. 
Now you're going to have a Middle Eastern front, which I believe that we're supposed to be, you know, allies with Israel. So we are supposedly supposed to be backing Israel. Meanwhile, we're also funneling money to these terrorist organizations as well. We're probably responsible for the money and the arms that they have. So it's a really weird situation. And then in Syria the other day, we shot down a Turkish drone. So we're already at odds with some of our own allies in NATO. So you have what's going on in Ukraine. Now you have new problems in the Middle East, and this is going to get bad. And people think, oh, it's just Middle Eastern countries. Who cares? It matters because the world's superpowers are involved. America, Russia, China, you name it. Everyone has their hands in the cookie jar. Everyone is somewhat responsible for what's going on. And they all have different interests. And they use different, different mil militia groups and different terrorist groups to fight each other. You name it. But most of it is funded by the world superpowers. So now we have these problems in the Middle East. And then soon, from the looks of things, we're going to have problems in Taiwan. We know that China wants to invade Taiwan. It's only a matter of time. They've been threatening it. Taiwan, every couple of weeks, they're reporting that they're finding, or they're, you know, their sensors are picking up Russian, I'm not Russian, but Chinese fighter jets, Chinese warships in the area. So what it looks like to me is, like I've been telling y'all, we're in World War III. And I think we've been in it for a while. I just think now we're now it's more of a hot war where now you're actually seeing soldiers on the ground and you're actually seeing military conflicts as opposed to, you know, cyber attacks and things that have been going on behind the scenes for years. But make no mistake about it, as politicians condemn what's happening over in Israel, a lot of them are happy about this. A lot of them are war mongers. There's a lot of money to be made in war. So don't think for one second as these people are, are, you know, saying, oh, we stand with Israel and this and that. A lot of these people want war. And the fact of the matter is that like last month, we just gave Iran like $6 billion in a prisoner exchange. We exchanged prisoners and released like $6 billion to them. And it just so happens a month later, organizations and groups funded by Iran are carrying out attacks on our allies. But hey, Crazy situation overall. I think the moral of the story is, like I said, if there's a will, there's a way. You don't need hundreds of billions of dollars. You can go to Kmart and successfully launch an invasion, uh, launch an invasion against someone with an Iron Dome defense. It's crazy, but I think that this is like, like an emperor has no clothes. I know you've heard that saying, the emperor has no clothes. It's one of those situations where I think we've been led to believe that some of like our military might is greater than what it really is. Like we were led to believe that Israel had the best, you know, air defense system, the Iron Dome, nothing's coming, nothing's getting past it. Meanwhile, a terrorist organization launches a few rockets and then they start flying in on freaking man-made paragliders. <laughs> Crazy stuff. But anyway, let me know your thoughts down below while you're down there. Hit the thumbs up, hit that subscribe. Ring that notification bell and I'll talk to you all soon in the next video.